Masters in, in the American Museum of Natural History in New York and tried to get it professionally verified that it is a dinosaur egg and tried to see what comparisons we can make to other known baby dinosaurs that were fossilized and their construction and their their shapes of their bone and so on and so forth. So, but today when you leave here, will it go back on that shelf? Uh, no, it's going to go into a safety deposit box. <laughs> Is there anybody at like uh, a USF that could look at this and tell you what it is that you know of? Um, anybody at USF? No, the I've, I've been in contact with uh, Greg Herbert and also uh, Peter Harris, or which are both paleontologists, but they are more uh, their studies are more into the modern day paleontology and um, felt that they would not be, uh, they would be, it wouldn't be within their realm of study to be able to make a good comment about it. Okay. okay. And again, what kind of dinosaur you think it could be? Uh, either a Lembiosaurus or a Cerophilus osbornea. And then uh, the egg nests that have been found in the uh, Western Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, uh, and Alberta, Canada uh, have been dated to about 85 million years ago. Any other questions? What about the uh, spiraling patterns that you were looking for in inside these rocks here? Were, were you satisfied with what you saw there? Yes, and, uh, and I think with a little bit more uh, research will be able to identify that spiral even better. And the other thing about it is that, um, again, this is the first imaging of that type of construction and we'll be able to be uh, lent forward through time for others to look at and to study uh, on the effects of hydrothermia at 750 degrees at two miles deep in the ocean floor. So was today everything you were hoping it would be? Oh, it, was, it surpassed everything I hoped it would be. One thing I'll point out about this hydrothermal kind of vent that's up front is a Pompeii worm skeleton that's in the front of it that was not pointed out to you before. And it is right here in this front corner. And the Pompeii worms only grow at two miles deep in the ocean floor. And there's a couple of flashlights here and a couple of magnifying glasses as you like. But this is the Pompeii worm skeleton right, right there. And this was named by Professor Craig Carey in uh, 1980 when he first went down with the Alvin onto the hydrothermal vent community. He found that the Pompeii worm was the highest heat tolerant animal in the world. It lives in 176 degree water next to boiling on one extreme and can take its head out of that flow and put its head into 52 degree water and not have any uh, side effects or ill effects, I guess that would be the right word, uh, for the worm. So, and it's got a car cardboard-like structure as its inner frame. He's studying that cardboard-like structure to find out if there isn't some uses for the space uh, uh, stations and so on for uh, insulation and so on and so forth to find out what the basis of, of that animal is. How would you describe yourself and your hobby? What, uh, what are you? you? Uh, crazy nut rock count. <laughs> <laughs> Explorer. Explorer, yeah. Pioneer. <laughs> Explorer. I, I think I like Explorer because uh, there was a time when I lived in Haiti for two months and I literally walked back into Haiti and and found some Arawak Indian tools, um, which I still have at home, which range from 850 BC to 950 AD. And then up in the Panhandle, I found some Clovis points that, that date back to 1100 BC. And the interesting thing about the Clovis point is they've been found in Clovis, New Mexico, in the site of a woolly mammoth. That's how they got the dating for it. And there's archeologists that have found similar points in France in caves. Now I found this one in the Panhandle of the United States. And if you go from here to Clovis, New Mexico, and from here to France, 
we're pretty much in the center of all that. So it too could be a link to some bigger story as well.